Hello and welcome everyone uh, to the next next episode of the analytics india magazine podcast simulated reality uh, today we have with us the leadership of e clerks uh, rubel joseph and sandeep shivasava uh, and we are going to talk about uh, how kpos and bpos came about being and how is their transition into uh, becoming more ai driven data driven or a data uh, companies or taking a more data first approach right uh, welcome rubel welcome sandeep how are you today Thank you, Kashyap. Thank you. Fantastic. Great. Great. So uh, let's let's start, right? Let's start with some basics. While uh, we have always been talking about IT, uh, IT enabled services companies, KPOs, BPOs, but we have been uh, using this word very lightly, right? Uh, Sandeep, if you can go first, and you know, like please. tell uh, the audience or help even me clarifying what is exactly a kpo or a bpo and how is it what is the difference probably between an it company or a kpo and what can we just clear up these terminologies and start from there yeah sure uh, and that's a good question to ask kashyap um, i would say as we all know the it revolution started sometimes mid 80s late 90s and picked up pace since then and because of the technological advancement at that point of time a lot of uh, what we call as it enabled services also start happening because of outsourcing offshoring technology making people uh, or enabling them to work remotely uh, with the large firms overseas and uh, so what it started with as a typical maturity it happens the things that start off uh, with more simpler processes what we call as a lift and shift uh, what has been done uh in those uh, organization can it be done remotely with the use of technology and that's where uh, the term of business process outsourcing or bpo was coined mm-hmm. and uh, as things are stabilized and mature uh, the industry moved towards more advanced work more knowledge intensive work where it's not just uh, following the script but it is also about uh, can we bring in some innovation can research uh, some more uh, in, uh, interesting aspects to the work right and change the way things are happening or improve the way things are happening and that's where the knowledge became the center of uh, the work and not just uh, copying and shifting and doing that stuff and that's where the kpo uh, emerged so yeah sorry please continue no no i was just saying that's how the kpos are uh, i would say and anything which requires a lot more uh, expertise uh, domain expertise business expertise or solution expertise uh, research uh, all that you can simply put it under the kpo umbrella okay okay and then how does that differ from business intelligence or is the same thing then again i would say business intelligence is a subset of kpo so kpo is a broader umbrella term and then you can be doing a lot of stuff not just analytics but we have seen uh, a lot of legal process outsourcing financial work and any field which requires uh, uh, i would say uh, expert experts with a uh, lot more uh, expertise uh, and knowledge uh, to do the things is what probably will fall under the kpo acha okay and so why why does it and kpo associate very closely right so they are usually so we say it kpo service providers or it bpo because uh, according to the definition that you just mentioned uh, kpo doesn't necessarily have to be entangled with Uh, IT or it does it have to be? No, IT. I would say was the starting point. Uh, so IT, uh, when it started off, was mostly uh, the application development, technology en- enablement, and uh, uh, bringing technology to all the manual processes that were being done, right, or enabling those things. So that's how the information technology revolution started. But what also happened because of this IT work, uh, we were able to connect to the remote applications, right? We were able to talk to the uh, the customers thousands of miles apart. Uh, we were able to get into their network with the help of technology. So it is called technology enabled. So technology is enabled some other set of services which are not application development, but you can do a lot more other services uh, such as whatever the the. organizations own team is doing can somebody sitting outside the organization can also do and that's where the enabled services happen and that's where the bpo and the kpo term point fantastic so basically it enabled kpos and now yeah. kpos are enabling 
an ai driven service yes solutions. is that yes. correct and so what what is the what is it about the existing it ecosystem that enabled kpos and then the kpos that enabled uh, taking an ai driven approach or making it an ai first company yeah so as a, uh, as i said like anything which is uh, which requires uh, human capital right human uh, thinking thought power knowledge uh, can be classified as kpo uh, if it is being done in an outsourcing environment and if you look at analytics data science or artificial intelligence that's what we are talking today about e clerks at the core of it it's very knowledge intensive setup right you need to know a combination of uh, business statistics mathematics algorithms to make that happen right and that comes uh, that requires deeper expertise advanced knowledge understanding uh, to make that happen these things cannot be prescribed to anybody to do the things one has to be innovating thinking and building solutions in that zone uh so that's where i would say uh, as the things mature we start doing more and more complex work and uh, over the last 20 years i would say the eclux journey has been uh, in that direction we have been evolving uh, in that uh, space as well and yeah i think overall it as an industry right is a, it has always been in line with continuous uh yeah. improvement like continuously they have to adapt and evolve otherwise no company is sustained right because everything changes so fast and so as you start now moving right so essentially you move from ito it services started becoming kpos and now kpos are taking the role of ai driven what are some of the first steps that enabled uh e clerks this smooth transition right yeah yeah so uh as i said like we started off our journey around 20 years back uh, kasha and uh, at that point of time uh, we were engaged with some of the leading customers in the technology and the financial space these were the fortune 500 firms and it's not easy to to win their trust right uh, for them to share with us uh, their critical core businesses uh, the processes that they want us to take a look at to improve the things and th- that was the foundation of our uh, business i would say we started working with the sales divisions marketing and the financial functions of uh, of these uh, firms right and uh, we started uh, making them more robust streamlined and efficient and how did we do it uh, that's where the knowledge uh, part came to being uh, we started leveraging a lot of quality frameworks uh practices such as six sigma lean framework and so on right to analyze each and everything that is being done and look for opportunities to improve that opportunity to make them more streamlined and uh, that also i would say is a core tenet of any analytical problem solving because you want to break it down into a smaller part you want to analyze each and every aspect of it and that's where the journey started now when we were looking at uh, doing this streamlining managing the core processes the idea was also to to make them more efficient right the idea was also to bring more technology uh, dag to them so there was a lot of automation efficiency and scale that we were doing and then obviously we have to get to what we call as a continuous monitoring right keep improving the things which have been done and that's yeah. what we did that's what we delivered yeah i think this is where i would like to bring rubel into the conversation right rubel your entire career has been into data right you started off uh, being an analytics slash data professional and now you are leading uh, you know such a big unit of uh, data how does this how does this uh, process work have you seen that the problems remain the same but data was enabling a better uh, approach to solving them or was it that you kind of uh thought that you know what data driven solutions is becoming a thing why not imbibe it into the existing it ecosystem what's the thought process behind uh such a big company as eclerks you know enabling data first approach to uh it kpo solutions yeah sure no i guess uh, if you ask me purely from a problems perspective i don't think they have they have changed a lot right because hmm. 
you would want to target customers, you would want to retain them, you would want to make sales, uh, you would want to give uh, loans to good customers and so on. Right? So the objectives from these problems, uh, I don't think they have, they have changed a lot. Uh, while having said that, uh, like Sandeep was alluding to earlier, a uh, lot of these processes became heavily technology dependent. For example, if I take a simple thing like sending emails to customers, right? highly manual probably 20 years back, uh, then came email automation platforms where you could do it uh, at scale, at speed. But then we thought that, hey, let's make it more intelligent. right? So how do we select the right customers? Uh, how do we identify the right frequency of sending these emails and so on? And that, that's just one problem, pretty much applicable to all the problems that you could think about. right? So that's where the whole data element came into play that let's look at data and make these decisions more intelligently, uh, learn from those decisions. That's where obviously machine learning AI is, is playing a role now. right? So that's how probably the evolution happened from a manual process, which is what we are calling as KPO, BPO, to then heavily technology-driven, automation-driven, which is where the IT-enabled services came into play to making it more intelligent and sophisticated now that's where the whole data science comes into play i would feel and what are some of what are some of the enablers right so for instance what comes right at the top of my mind there's an existing infrastructure right which you can uh, uh, this uh, which you can leverage there's an existing uh, human resources which are already coding and you know uh, they are they are automating things or everything apart from that what are some of the enablers right to to so for such a big company like eClerks, right, there's an existing ecosystem. How do you leverage them to the best of your capabilities? At the same time, I foresee some challenges. There might be some resistance to adoption, adoption of adoption of newer technologies, right? So what? How do you convince uh, your leadership to kind of start taking a data first approach and then overall imbibe the culture of you know uh, having a uh, data first approach into your solutions and uh, client services yeah no i think uh, it's it's also a function of how these processes have evolved right i don't think uh, you can think of any niche process that we operate in right now which is which is not data driven today i would say uh, probably 10 years back 15 years back it was okay to just uh, run run of the mill processes uh, just run the way they are uh, but the clients that we work with right now, they themselves have realized the potential of uh, data to make it more sophisticated, uh, make it more impactful. Uh, look at look at the scenarios that would span out if you make these decisions. Uh, and as a as a matter of uh, design and choice, we had we had nothing but to kind of go with that approach itself uh, to bring in data elements, bring in the whole uh, consulting side of things, bring in the whole technology side of things as well. So it was a combination of, I would say, what our clients were looking for versus how the industry was evolving. Uh, but to your point, uh, because of the foundational setup we had on IT, on KPO, uh, starting off the data science consulting piece, that integration came off quite well, I would say. Right? And uh, if you ask me, that's probably our biggest USP as well, uh, to, be, to be able to uh, bring that whole ecosystem, which has elements of all of these aspects together. Yeah. Sandeep, have you seen any resistance when it comes to convincing clients to take a data first approach since you've been, you, you know, you've seen the journey from IT to, you know, with Rubel and his team, uh, you know, leading on to the data first approach, any resistance and how do you overcome, how do you convince the clientele? Well, uh, I would say definitely in the analytics space, uh, the resistance was there when I started off my career. Uh, whenever we used to sit across the table, uh, the always first thing that we used to hear is we already know a lot about our businesses. Uh, so what more can you get from the data, right? And, and maybe to a certain extent, uh, the data was also not in abundance at that point of time, right? So we were also starting off in a journey. So maybe their apprehensions were right, but slowly as more and more data started getting generated and uh, our solutions also evolved, I think the audience also started realizing the benefits of uh, or the value of these solutions. Right? Uh, internally at eClerks, I would say when we were looking at uh, pivoting around AI and data science, uh, yeah, it is a big change management exercise, Kashyap, uh, and I'm sure all the organizations go through that. It is at the first level business alignment of everybody in the organization across rank and function. And eClerks was a decently sized uh, organization uh, if I go back 15 years back. 
So from there on, uh, to get everybody aligned, everybody to think about the data first, everybody to believe that uh, they can use analytics to take right decision and they will benefit from that. Uh, it does require uh, time and convincing, I would say, and demonstrating the outcomes as well. Yeah. Is that and easy, uh, Rubel, convincing uh, them or how do you? I would say I would say no. So you you come across two kinds of people. One, like Sandeep mentioned, who probably are, for a lack of better word, not not educated enough on what this could bring mean to, to their business. Uh, second kind of folks are the folks who understand the value of doing it, but probably can't can't see the ROI in it, right? So that's that's a different play altogether. Uh, rather than uh, going with a big bang approach, you kind of demonstrate something, prove that this works. Uh, learn from the prototypes, uh, demonstrate ROI. Uh, and, and I keep on emphasizing that ROI word because that, that goes a long way. Uh, there's no uh, lot of convincing needed after that. right? If, if the business finds value in an analytic solution or a data science solution, the, the conversation becomes much, much easier. Uh, to the other extent, I would say it's heavily uh, dependent on the vertical or the function we are speaking to, right? So there are, if you speak about something like retail marketing, uh, I don't think there's a lot of convincing needed quite mature, quite aware and educated audience. Versus if you talk about some traditional business, maybe in the manufacturing logistics space, uh, it's still maturing very, very nascent stage. So there's that uh, little bit of education aspect that you need to bring to the table as well. Okay, okay. So yeah, I think it's an overall uh, daunting process that you guys are undertaking. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, aspects to it apart from, so while the existing ecosystem can play an enabler, convincing your clientele so so help me understand this right how how does a when so the entire kpo service model is essentially you go to a client and you say you know what you need two software engineers you need uh, one of this one of that and you know this is what the billing will come to nowadays do you go to them and say you know what you need two data scientists and one how does that process work like how do you start the data first approach and how does that uh, translate into a uh, sale and then you start working on the business problem if you can just help sure. me understand the process sure let me let me probably take a minute to uh, look at the companies that exist in this space who we would probably call as peers or, or competitors for that matter right so there are firms who bring in the consulting side of things uh, who are more strategic but may not uh, or rather more often than not shy away from getting their hands dirty or getting into hands on execution then you would have IT players who uh, play it heavily on the technology aspect, development aspect, make it a platform play. Uh, and I would agree, I would probably uh, look at look back and see that there's no one flexible uh, or rigid product in analytics or data science that has made the cut. Uh, then you would have obviously a traditional operational firms, which like you mentioned are uh, again, pro for a lack of better word, body shops who provide that capacity and bandwidth play. Uh, I, I would, probably go on to the extent of saying that one does not work uh, better than the other. It's that whole integrated play that has that has worked for us. Uh, so any, any engagement, if you dissect it that we have with the client, it would have elements of each of these. It would be a people play where you have consultants, domain experts, functional experts. It would be a technology play. There would be some accelerator or uh, service as a software is, is the buzzword that that's making the rounds now. Uh, it would have an operational play, our traditional KPO business coming into uh, coming into the mix. Right? So it's that uh, well-rounded of engagement or ecosystem that we bring to the table in most cases. Uh, and hence, we are able to kind of make the pitch in a way that, hey, this is your problem. Uh, this is your solution. This is how we will implement it for you, right? So you don't care about the people we deploy. You don't care about uh, how many hours they are working and so on. Uh, this is what we will charge you to drive these outcomes for you. And again, that that makes it a much more easier conversation than just saying that, hey, we'll give you four folks. Okay, fair enough. And that's a very interesting point you uh, mentioned, right? So you are able to... Uh kind of enable the existing uh, expertise, right? But at the same time, there's another side of the argument. There's a lot of niche AI players coming into the picture, right? And they are expert in only one problem, let's say, right? They, and they or one or one sector or one area per se. And they kind of enable them expertise. Do you see this companies as a threat 
uh, to your existing market share or do you think that they are an enabler in a lot of ways you get to learn from them how does that how do you foresee that competition and bo- I, both of you can probably uh, you know, yeah. help me with this yeah i don't uh, i guess the, the short answer is i don't i don't feel uh, them as a threat it's it's more complementary and augmenting what we are trying to do as well uh, right to your point the folks that focus on this niche very specific areas let's say a supply chain problem expert uh, i don't think we want to kind of get so in depth into one space as well we want to that be that broader service enabler who can pretty much solve problems across the board evolve with the clients that's why we are kind of very close to clients understand their domains and processes really well versus uh, this new niche player would again play into one of those areas they would probably be really good at consulting maybe uh, a great nlp platform and we try to kind of work in partnership with those uh, expertise areas as well we have cases where uh, let's say someone a, a top four or a big four uh, firm has done the consulting while we manage the execution side of things we have places where we work on some of these niche platforms that are uh, coming up and and clients are finding impact so we adopt those technology aspects and right? so that way that flexibility and adaptability is something that m- makes me say that it's it's more complementary than a, a contradiction or a threat i would say fantastic fantastic uh, i think uh, with that note i think it explains you know uh, we have gotten a fair bit of picture uh, of uh, uh, what the it kpo bpo system is and like how it is uh, how companies such as eclerks are now taking a data first approach in enabling these services what are some of the challenges uh, what are some of the enablers uh, how do you see the competition uh, any any closing thoughts on what uh, you know what the future holds for eclerks sandeep if you can take that up uh i would say the future at eclerks uh, uh is very promising uh, kashyap and uh, we are really at a stage uh, where we are seeing a lot of action happening uh and kind of maturity that is arriving in this space so we are very positive about that i would say the last uh, decade has been more about transformation setting up the scene adopting the technologies uh building the team uh, acquiring the talent etc and now we are at a stage where we are looking uh, to grow uh, at uh, 20 plus uh, kagar i would say uh, as we go forward the to your earlier question uh, there are a lot of players coming in bringing a lot of uh, niche solutions i see that as a uh, great opportunity because it's not a threat the space is quite big everybody can coexist and it also inspires you right to do better and more things and what we are proud of is uh, and the ecosystem that we have access to 200 plus clients that we have which is where we have an existing relationship we have a uh, understanding of their business and processes right and uh, just linking it back to the kpo thing the whole space is driven by uh, knowledge and uh, innovation so no matter the problem is the same how the two players would solve the outcomes may still be very different so that's where we should be focusing on as in how we can innovate how we can deliver a great outcome uh, by leveraging these technologies and data science and uh, ai algorithms and uh, it's all a function of the practices the people that you have and and how you go about solving these problems a lot of innovation is at play uh and definitely that's what we are looking forward to solving more and more problems uh, across industries discussion okay great uh, on that positive note of coexisting and scaling together and solving interesting problems through a data first approach uh, i would like to thank you both uh, for coming on the podcast it was very insightful uh, and i i can't wait for our uh, viewers to watch this thank you Thank you, Kashyap. Thank you, Kashyap, for giving us a pause to talk about it, and it was nice talking to you and the support that you brought to the team. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Bye bye.